Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Um, Kat, I missed that email. I was out of the room. Could you, uh, could you give contacts again? Someone wrote in a comment to one of your blog posts? Yes, on Lockerdome. My blog. So it was about Komodo so Firewall. Komodo Firewall, they said they were... What? Right, I gave the link in chat to my tech blog, and I was curious what everybody else thought of Komodo, because I had done a long post about my recommendations for Windows protection software, free versions. Nothing paid, all free. Yep. And somebody wrote in a really nice long post about Komodo saying, you know, problems that he's had with it. He said most people that recommend it, he finds, just test it. They don't run it for long periods. And that's true. I didn't. So I was asking if anybody's got any experience with running it and what you guys thought. Because I don't want to keep recommending something if I shouldn't be. Well, I've heard a lot of good things about Komodo. I mean, not only is it absolutely free, but I have too. independent studies have confirmed that it is one of, I mean, to some people it could be almost to the point of annoying. It's so good, uh, but it is very, right. very solid. And I, I feel better in giving my attention and sending traffic to free software in that capacity because you know that it's in their best interest to give you a good product. It's, number one, it's free, so you know they're not releasing crap into the wild or giving you crap uh, or charging you for something that can or, or be attained elsewhere for free. We've done a video before on Komodo. Uh, specifically in relation to yep. that particular review, and people, I've I I have yet to hear anything bad about it. Personally, I mean, maybe uh, I could be off in my Neither own little bubble. That's why I was so surprised to get this comment. <coughs> I'll copy it, Chris, and email you the comment so you can see what I'm talking about because it's pretty long. I don't want to read the whole thing. Now, data lore, you were talking about. So I'll send you an email with it. Yeah, well, you were talking, Chris at Perillo dot com. Uh, you were talking data lore, right. I think, about uh, zone alarm. Mm. Yeah, just in, in terms of um, upgrading it, like actually, I just had to do it last weekend. Um, somebody was using the free version on in version six point, I think it was six point five point something, and the latest version is seven point something. But it, it, generally, if if the Zolar hasn't been upgraded or has an awful lot of stuff that's kind of far running off or whatever, I tend to do a clean install rather than an upgrade. Particularly if I'm going from one major revision to another, I always go clean install. And um, if you do the upgrades, only it does actually remember um, the, the the settings. But I always find it tends to muddle them up a little bit as well because you get a lot of entries from setup files and stuff like that as well that we're looking for internet connections. So the best way is just to do a, a fresh install. But when you do a fresh install or a clean install, it doesn't remember any of the, the ones that you've saved before. Like the King install wipes the history of what it, what, what it allowed through. So you go back to the whole bubble issue of um, allow, deny, remember. See, this is, to me... And that's what's on there. Th I, I, this is why I believe uh, that a lot of software should be storing settings remotely. Settings and configurations. I mean, it should be local, but there should be a place that I can trust to upload stuff that has all these various settings because when I switch computers I have to basically reinstall everything I mean not just reinstall but actually yeah. configure it a again to the point where it was uh, that I had it the last time I was uh, um, you know using it on the other computer that that's that's the most frustrating part of upgrading or switching or doing anything different I'm I think you'll find that a lot of open source software keeps all of its settings in like plain text files, and on Windows they'll go under Documents and Settings, your name, uh, application data, or whatever, and on your like.